With the current world lockdown, pretty much everyone's lives has been affected in some way. Everyone's trying to stay inside as much as possible or practice social distancing. So a curious question comes up. How's your favorite pop culture scene? South Korea's entertainment industry faring through all of this. So we're going to talk about how it's adapting to the current pandemic. So one of the first events to be canceled or postponed are K-pop concerts due to COVID-19, of course. Now these concerts have been canceled both in Korea as well as overseas. And with K-pop concerts being canceled, many people would expect that K-pop labels are taking it hard, profits are down, and this is a really tough time for these companies. And for a lot of these companies, it is hard times indeed. So many labels and singers have resorted to another strategy, going online. Online concerts or virtual concerts might not be the preferred method that fans would like to see their stars in person, but it is a viable platform and one that the biggest K-pop acts can still make a lot of money from. For instance, if we look to Western artists, we can actually see this already in play. You have artists such as Chris Martin, Youngblood, and John Legend do online concerts to great success. With Youngblood's online concert, he had just over 357,000 views, which according to this article is 210 times more than if you were to tour in Asia and perform in each individual concert. These virtual concerts are streamed on various social media platforms, such as Facebook and Instagram, as well as video streaming platforms, such as YouTube and Twitch. As seen from Youngblood and other performers, reach via virtual concerts are much more accessible as anyone can access them around the world. With the world situation as it is, virtual concerts may be too pricey for some. The reason isn't because of the price point, with many virtual tickets well under $40 USD. Simply, it's because many people can't work during this time, limiting many people's spending money. This in turn limits the entertainment spending, the free virtual concerts, or other free pastimes. The money crunch is very understandable, as many cancelled K-pop concerts have issued full refunds to would-be concert goers. Yet, to many other fans, being able to see their favorite artists perform online at a fraction of a normal concert ticket is too hard to pass up. With that being said, if Western artists can do it, imagine if a big K-pop act such as BTS were to do this. And while BTS did their Bong Bong concert, which is a two-day event that happened in April 18th and 19th Korea time, some music analysts are saying the laid Map of the Soul tour were to happen online, it could potentially make up to $1.1 billion USD. And this is assuming that if Big Hit Entertainment did like a 50% online discount to watch BTS online. One company, SM Entertainment, has adapted to the world situation quite well. SM Super M had their own virtual concert not too long ago called Beyond Live on VLive, a live streaming app with tickets priced at $29.99. SM went all out with light sticks and real-time comments, doing their best to make the online K-pop concert experience to replicate the real thing as much as possible. Super M performed their new song, Tiger Inside, to an empty audience. They would replace a live crowd with a world audience tuning in throughout the world as the groups took questions from virtual viewers. Their label mates, Red Velvet, also joined in with their own video appearance, giving fans more value for their virtual concert tickets. Super M's virtual concert pulled in people from 109 countries, over 120 million hearts on social media, and 75,000 virtual tickets sold. With the aforementioned price of $29.99 and 75,000 tickets sold, you don't have to be a math major to know that that's a lot of profit that SM made. Estimates show that their concert made just over $2 million USD, which actually earned more than Super M's live concert back in February in California, pulling in $1 million USD. Two big reasons why virtual concerts outpaced their offline counterparts is the endless audience room and accessibility to the event. With virtual concerts, there's no limit how many people can fit in the stadium or concert venue, nor do you have to be at a concert to go. SM Entertainment has stated that with live offline concerts, the most popular idol groups pull around 10,000 people. So with Super M's Beyond Live virtual concert that had 75,000 people watching, that's 7.5 times more than what a live concert would pull on average. But that's not all for SM Entertainment. Super M will also make a lot of money via merchandise. SM also had NCT 127, NCT Dream, and Wavy virtual concerts in May, showing that the music label is all in with online concerts. In addition to virtual concerts, other labels did smaller virtual fan meets and fan signings, where you can watch it online if you buy the artist's album and are chosen in a lottery to join. 
Many of these fan signings range from anywhere from 50 to 200 attendees to keep the audience size small. Rookie group MCND did an online fan signing on April 27th, and unlike most fan signings, they opened it up to both Korean as well as international fans. In addition to artists making money through online tickets, there's a lot of profit to be made using advertising as well as sponsorships as well. Now, online concerts do have a big advantage in that it reduces one of the biggest costs to companies, and that is travel costs. So when a K-pop act performs, especially if it's overseas, they actually have to bring not just the group themselves and the managers, also a lot of backstage teams, such as the makeup artist team and the, the stage and lighting team and the backup dancers as well. And when you add the number of people that's needed for a K-pop production, that's not the K-pop group themselves, those airline tickets and hotel fees and food expenses and Uber and bus transportation fees all add up to be an incredible cost to the company. But if you do an online virtual concert, all you need really is the group, the management, and the skeleton production staff. And since you can do it in the same city, since assumingly everyone lives around the same area, the travel cost is very low. So while big K-pop groups such as BTS still stand to be profitable during these dire times, smaller K-pop groups are feeling the burn. They're feeling the pain of this lockdown. Unlike the more famed group that already has their fans and has a huge social media following and have the branding as well as the money to back them up, these small and mid-sized companies really need to get out there. They really need to go on music shows, fan meets and promotions and meeting the fans and anything to get their group name to the masses. You have smaller groups such as VAV and TOO, which is a rookie group, are feeling the effects from the virus. Even groups that have a sizable international fan base, such as Atiz, had to recently cancel their seven-stop European tour and be recalled back to Seoul because the lockdown, and even they're hurting. For these smaller to mid-sized groups, this lockdown is just killing their company's revenue and profit shares. And it's gonna take a while for them to recover. Now, a common prediction in Korea is that these K-pop concerts probably won't resume until maybe three to four months from now. And that's gonna hurt just the K-pop industry in general. So what about the rest of the K-pop industry? How are they adapting to this? So music and variety shows are being filmed in empty studios with the skeleton staff and no audience, just the cast members themselves. Other Korean singers have resorted to YouTube or podcasts to get through these tough times, or these singers resort to just chatting and just talking to their fans online. So moving outside of K-pop, how are the other sectors of Korean entertainment holding up? So looking at movies, for instance, you have movie theaters such as CGV, and Lotte Cinema that are ghost towns. People don't want to see movies right now because of the world situation. And this is a complete 180 from 2019 when the Korean movie industry was growing at a 4.8% clip. But now a lot of movie entertainment companies are asking the government for a bailout to soften the blow that the Korean film industry has been taking. Movies are especially popular among the 20 year old and older crowd. So to have no movie theaters being played is quite a blow to the Korean pop culture industry. As some of these movie industry officials say, the South Korean film industry is sinking into the abyss of a dead end crisis. Many firms in the industry have given up hope of overcoming and have been bidding farewell to their employees. While sectors like tourism and hospitality are deemed essential by the Korean government, the film industry is not one of them. Many movie theaters have taken matters into their own hands. Many of them have been asking people to come back to movie theaters that it's safe and to practice social distancing. And for that to happen, they would limit the amount of people that can go into each movie theater. Yet despite encouragement from movie theaters to come back, many Koreans are still skeptical. So in turn, a lot of these film companies have no choice to delay film releases much further back. Back in late March, Korean movie theater CGV closed 30% of its movie theaters, with the remaining 70% of open theaters only showing movies three times a day. It's a bleak situation for the film industry. Yet, there is hope for movie theaters, and it's throwing it back to old-school drive-in movie theaters. One such drive through is called Park Dongju's Drive-In Cinema, where people can enjoy the movie in their cars while keeping social distancing. So far, park sales have increased 10 to 20% on the weekdays and being fully sold out during the weekends, showing that businesses are getting a bit creative during this time. As for TV shows and dramas, like their movie counterparts, a lot of them that's being filmed are being delayed. Some of them are resorting to live conferences to have updates when the drama will be aired and to keep in touch with their audience. 
One supernatural drama, The Cursed, has opted for a broadcast instead of a live conference. Shooting locations for dramas that are currently being produced or being produced in the future have been postponed as drama production crews that have been overseas are now being recalled back to Korea. But things are slowly getting better in Korea. While Korea was one of the first countries hit by the virus after China, South Korea's fast and effective response to the pandemic actually proved wonders. The amount of pandemic cases has been going down in Korea, and more and more people are feeling a little more confident to get out. As I talk to friends that live in the country, a lot of the cafes are actually open now in Korea, as well as other businesses. So it is getting better in Korea, but there are a lot of Koreans still, of course, that are skeptical. They still want to keep that social distancing. After Children's Day on May 5th, Korea started opening stores and telling citizens to practice social distancing when outside. Everything seemed to return to normal in Korea. Yet just five days later, on May 10th, 34 new infections occurred after nightclubs and bars reopened. A 29-year-old man who was tested positive spread the virus after visiting the night scene in Itaewon, a popular area for foreigners in the nightlife scene. President Moon Jae-in said that despite rapid improvement in handling the pandemic, Korea is in a prolonged war against the deadly disease. With this, the K-pop, K-drama, and K-movie industries may take a bit longer until they reopen and audiences are comfortable going out once again. So thank you for watching this video. I'd love to know your comments in the comments below. And if you guys want to hear real talk about K-pop from a K-pop journalist, then please download my free ebook below. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, guys.